for the first time on my big screen. A brilliant projection. Stay and see how it looks. Enter and let's start. Digital greetings to all. I am your friend Javier Guerrero and today I bring you what many have been asking me for, the new Mechul KP1 Full HD projector, the first Mechul brand projector with which it is breaking the mid-range market. With its KP1 projector, Mechul promises a decent home theater experience without breaking the bank. I am pleasantly surprised with the quality of this projector and I think that with my discount coupon, it can be turned into a great gift. Be careful, like all the mid-range ones, it has good things and others that are not so good. Because it is not perfect. For me, it's a projector, which is finally a projector and later you will understand that phrase. I do not elaborate more, today we will meet the terror of the Wanbo. Let's go with your unboxing. The Mechul KP-1 projector arrived very well packaged from import, I've had it for a couple of months, but due to time I couldn't do this review, but at least I've been able to try it all this time. I am not one to value boxes, but I really like the presentation of the Mechul KP-1, since it comes in a practical suitcase with its handle and also lined with this nice cover. On the outside of the box are the main features of this device with images boasting of its Android TV 11 and full screen. As every projector comes perfectly protected in its foam box, here we will find a small color user manual, a power cable, an HDMI cable that until now had not come with any other projector that I have reviewed, a remote control just like the ones that used in your TV box, but in this case it is configured to use it in a dual way, since with the same control we will manage the projector with its infrared output, and the Android TV system with its Bluetooth connection. There is also an analog audio and video cable with RCA inputs that hardly anyone uses anymore and finally the projector is properly protected in its little bag, and as they say, the first impression is what counts and I liked it. Mechul, unlike the Wanbo, opted for the horizontal design in a beautiful combination of white and grey colors that give it a modern and sophisticated look. When analyzing it more closely, in the upper part we find seven touch buttons that are used to control the functions of the projector only and not of the Android TV system. In the front part and happily with its cover is its 5cm glass lens, and the front infrared port with a nice metal detail that surrounds it along with the brand logo. On the left side we find the manual focus wheel with a decorative grey disc and this is the air inlet with something very peculiar since it integrates a removable dust filter to clean it. A great idea by Mechul to prevent particles from entering the interior of the projector. On the other side is the hot air outlet and all its connectivity. Here we have one USB 2.0 port, two HDMI ports, one analog audio and video input, one 3.5 mm audio output, and a micro SD card reader. At the bottom, due to its horizontal design, it does not have a tripod thread, but rather these four holes to attach it to a base and put it on a ceiling support, and this very convenient removable leg to regulate the projection angle when it is on a table. Finally, on the back is the 5 watt audio output, the rear infrared port, and the AC power input. But here there is also a very concealed cover that when removed, we find the true plus of this projector since it integrates its own TV stick KD5 in a hidden HDMI port, and from where it launches the fully certified Android TV 11 operating system. And although this stick does not integrate the best processor, and is only full HD, I can assure you that having Android TV 11 certified, it is twice as powerful as the uncertified Android of the Wanbo. In addition, this TV stick can be removed and exchanged for a TV stick KD3 that has 2 gigabits of RAM and better hardware, with that you can make this KP1 projector much faster and more powerful. In its first projector, the Mechul brand has not made any problems and has focused on making a true projector, that is, it has prioritized brightness, resolution and correction settings. No internal memory, RAM, connectivity or operating systems. To supply this, it has only integrated one of its TV sticks and that's it. This is what I was referring to when I told you that this is a projector, that in the end it is just a projector, without integrating functions or anything, since all the important functions are inside the TV stick. The KP1 integrates its own operating system for corrections and projection settings, but it is more basic. 
Also, with the remote you can control both the projector's menu as well as the TV stick's menu, therefore, it offers better integration than using a projector plus an external TV stick where two controls would be needed. For its price and range, the KP-1 projector has excellent specifications, which are It is an LCD type LED projector. It has a brightness of 700 ANSI lumens, full HD native resolution and 4 Kelvin upscaling. Projection size up to 250 inches. Integrates automatic keystone correction. It has one speaker output of 5 watts. Processor and operating system only for projection. Does not integrate RAM memory. Does not integrate storage memory. And it does not integrate any type of connectivity. But due to the internal TV stick, it also integrates these functions. Android TV 11, official and fully certified. 1GB of RAM and 8GB of storage. Full HD resolution and HDR10 Plus support. Integrates dual band WIFI. Integrates Bluetooth 5.1. And integrates the native Chromecast function. Not only does it have a nice design and good specifications, but also, Mekul has given me a great discount voucher only for subscribers of this channel who want to buy it from its renewed official website, so subscribe now. You only have to enter from the link in the first comment or from this QR code to its official page and here you will see that it costs about $330. But if you write my special discount code called JAVIKP1 in this drawer and click the apply button, a generous discount of $84 will be applied by my brother, which is the biggest discount that Mekul has offered me for the followers of my channel. Fortunately in his list countries of America are United States, Canada, Colombia, Mexico, Peru and Uruguay and also Spain and to several of them shipping is completely free as you can see here. If you are from one of these countries you can take advantage of this great discount by writing my coupon. Or if not, you can also buy it with my AliExpress link, but the cheapest I found there was about $300. Be careful, you can buy it wherever you want, that depends on you, but an affiliate link is always associated with discounts and promotions that sellers give us. Now, with my favorite tools, the time has come for this projector to find out if its interior is worth it or not. You already know that I don't mince words, nor fear when it comes to disassembling a device, not even because it's new and luckily taking this KP-1 projector apart was pretty easy. I'll remove this flag and here you can see the thin board that controls the touch buttons. And this is internal design of the new Mekul projector. The movement for the focus is only based on gear wheels so it is quite simple. This is the projector board with its processor. Over here you can see the TV stick KD5 and under these plastics are the secrets of the KP1 that I am going to unravel to be prepared for any future failure. The first thing that can be easily removed is this 12 volt cooler that pumps air into the LCD screen to cool it down. Since when an LCD screen gets very hot it tends to produce dark spots on the projection. In this area is where the light that has already passed through the LCD screen arrives. Here these images are amplified and concentrated through this very delicate and finely constructed magnifying lens. In turn the amplified images are reflected in this mirror that directs them through the lens out of the projector. Be careful, the electronic board only performs projection functions, that is, Android TV is not installed here. This board processes the images for the LCD screen, makes the image settings and controls the connection ports, and to remove it I must disconnect the cables and the front infrared sensor. When you remove the TV stick, you can see the third HDMI port that is hidden and that it does. Through this flag it takes the Android TV interface to the LCD screen to be projected. And this is the LCD screen of the KP-1. It is a full HD 72% NTSC LCD panel. That is the color space that it covers and in other projectors it is only 45% NTSC. Therefore, for this range it is very good. By removing this cover I am getting to the heart of the KP-1. Here in front is the power supply board for the projector. And this is the most critical area that must always be kept well ventilated and this fan, which is the main fan, does that. This is the reflector of the power LED, which is nothing more than a kind of bell that concentrates and takes advantage of the LED light as much as possible. And here I wanted to get to the heart of every projector, the power LED diode, the cause of the amount of NSI lumens that every projector generates and this is undoubtedly very large, with its heat radiator that looks like that of a car and with four copper tubes for heat absorption. 
All these LEDs for safety have a thermostat calibrated at 80 degrees Celsius connected in series, so these LEDs do not usually burn. Because if they reach that maximum temperature, the thermostat opens and the LED goes out for safety, avoiding a misfortune. In this corner is the small acoustic box that houses the 5 watt speaker so the audio is only monaural. If you want stereo output you must output the audio via Bluetooth or the 3.5mm output. And on the back, what looks like another speaker is just a passive radiator to take advantage of the bass. Finally, this is the lens that, as you can see, is large and has double glass lenses inside for a more precise focus without distortion. This was the journey through the interior of the Mechul KP-1 and all its components. Now I understand its operation much better and above all that it could fail in the future and how to solve it. I really like the large LCD screen, the very successful double ventilation and that powerful power LED. We will have to see if it actually generates those 700 ANSI lumens. I think these components are well balanced in terms of price, including the TV stick of course and it will be a fantastic rival to any other mid-range projector. I'm even sure that it will make a great fight for the Wanbo T6 Max, but nothing is said until they face each other. Since it does not have a tripod thread, I will use this table to put the Mechul KP-1. After turning it on, the first thing is to link the Bluetooth remote control, just like in a TV box and from here the configuration is the same as for any device with Android TV. Connect to your WIFI network, enter your Google account, choose your applications by default, and that easy you will already be in the Android TV interface. This Android TV is running from the internal TV stick KD5 of the KP-1 projector, it is very fast and fully certified, that's why it has the official Play Store. The configuration menu is the same as in any other device with Android TV, the important thing is that it has the official Netflix certification, and it is the latest version 11 which is the most stable. But from the TV stick menu you will not be able to access the projector settings, since the KP-1 has its own menu that is very simple and only has four sections. In the source section, you can choose the video input from these five possible options. In the options section, you can change the language, restore factory settings and adjust the sound and trapezoidal correction. In the time section, you can set an automatic shutdown timer. And in the image section, you can make various types of adjustments in the image, in the color, in the aspect and in the way of projection, if you wanted to install the KP-1 on the ceiling. In addition, the trapezoidal correction adjustments should not be missing in any projector, and the KP-1 does have them and you can adjust them both horizontally and vertically. You can even rotate the projection up to 45 degrees on both sides or reset everything to auto. Now I'm going to put the KP-1 projector about 8 feet, to project about 100 inches first, on my big white 150 inches screen, but in different light levels. With my room almost fully lit, look at how these images look. Not bad considering that my lights are 80% on. You can see the images and with other projectors at this light level, I could see almost nothing, although this projector is not designed for this light level either. If I turn off a lamp and leave my room at 50% light, the images improve much more as you can see. And if I turn everything off, the images generated by the Mechul KP-1 are clear and bright. It gives me a good feeling regarding the brightness measurement that I will do later, because it seems to me that it is close to the 700 ANSI lumens that Mechul promises. The colors are also very vibrant and don't look as saturated as you see in these images and the sharpness is also very good especially since I'm projecting at 100 inches as above 150 inches full HD quality starts to fade lose sharpness. I find it to be the best image quality I have ever achieved with a projector. All these images come from the internal KD5 TV stick which is full HD and that makes it compatible with this projector which only projects to full HD. Without a doubt, 1080 pixels is the minimum recommended to have a good visualization. Although the truth is, with this KP-1 projector it is not even necessary to have my entire room turned off, since with 30% lighting the quality of the images is still very good and depending on the video, such as one of mine where I use a lot of light, you will be able to see perfectly well at this level of illumination. Checked. That LED diode that we saw in the digital autopsy, it really does a good job. And that is the end of my disarmament friends, to know how are the components that really do the hard work.
regarding the voice assistant. Abrir canal Javier Guerrero en YouTube. Okay, aquí tienes algunos videos. It was to be expected carrying certified Android TV. Abrir video de TV Box Mi Cool KM2 Plus en el canal de Javier Guerrero. It is very accurate even searching for a particular video. Abrir Disney Plus. De acuerdo, abriendo Disney más. And also very fast, so in this function there are no problems. Another function of Android TV is the Chromecast, and in this case I am mirroring my laptop screen from a Chrome browser tab for the use of exhibitions or transmitting images. Web pages or texts it works fine, although for texts you need to turn off the lights, but these are read normally and the characters look defined and can be understood. But for streaming games, I don't recommend it because as you can see, there is a significant delay in streaming. For games you'd better use the HDMI port. I wonder if it will be possible to use the more powerful Fire Stick 4 Kelvin Max instead of the Stick KD5. I'll check that quickly. But as you can see, the Fire Stick doesn't fit because it's longer. But everything is possible in life my brother, if I take it apart I think that now it is possible for it to enter and as you can see, it fit perfectly. Although after turning on the KP1 I get the message no signal on the screen, so it can't be done. But it's not that it doesn't work, because if I plug in this adapter and then put the same fire stick in it, it works and very well. The reason is the power, since the design of the hidden HDMI port of the Mechul projector is enabled to feed the Mechul TV sticks through that same port avoiding the need for a power cable. If you remove the TV stick KD5 and want to use it outside, then you will need a power cable since the HDMI ports of smart TVs do not have this feature. But if I can plug the Fire Stick into one of its external HDMI ports and thus have two different certified operating systems on the KP1, those who use both Google and Amazon services would like that option very well. If I go to Netflix and open the pattern tester, it recognizes the images as authentic full HD images of 1920x1080, and therefore the details are according to that resolution. Taking advantage of the fire stick, I am going to project a white screen to measure the brightness of the KP1 at a distance of 1 meter as I do with all projectors, and I want you to see closely the intensity of light that this power LED reaches and that it easily reaches 680 lux and that is above many mid-range projectors. What is also true is that this KP1 makes a little more noise due to its fan. If I measure it at about 70 centimeters from its source, this noise reaches 50 decibels, which is higher than that of the Wanbo T6 Max. Luckily, its 5 watt speaker is loud and will easily mask this noise. If we measure the total sound power of your speaker at 70 centimeters, It gives us about 80 decibels, which is enough for a medium-sized room. Also, after a couple of hours running, the temperature will have stabilized at around 50 degrees Celsius, which seems normal to me for a device of this power. Remember, 80 degrees Celsius is the critical temperature for this projector. For those who ask me, please try it during the day and with a lot of ambient light. Well, these are my worst conditions, more or less at 1 in the afternoon. And projecting on my white screen, this is how the images look. Not bad, it looks very dim, but at least you can see it and with previous projectors it was simply impossible to see anything at this time. Now I will test it on my reflective grey screen. If I measure the lighting, look at how much ambient sunlight enters my room. More than 400 lux. But this special gray screen, it's special for a reason, can filter and channel the light from a projector much better, returning it more efficiently to people. Tell me in the comments what you think is the big difference between using a white screen or a gray screen. For me, both have their advantages and disadvantages. As of 6 in the afternoon, the sun has already gone down and from this time I can already use my white screen with the Mechul KP1. The images are good, although it is not yet night and my room is partially illuminated by sunset. 
and to get the most out of this mech cool projector, we will see how it behaves projected at 150 inches, which is the maximum that my screen gives. I have the projector about 4 meters away and notice that I am projecting on my white screen. Keep these images in your memory, because in a moment I will also project but on my gray screen. The brightness of the Mechul KP-1 is quite strong. It should be between 600 and 700 ANSI lumens. I usually use the entire surface of my screen mainly when I project video games, because it is more exciting and immersive and I can assure you that for its price, this KP-1 will not disappoint you. I can even turn on some light, and still you can see with comfort and quality. If they can buy it with my discount of $246, of course it's worth it. You are being the judge of these tests, you know that I don't like to hide anything and I'll show you how it works. Now I will project it to full screen using my reflective grey cloth. I have already told you that this way of projecting is optional, and it is for people who are looking for a better contrast, or like me, they have a lot of ambient light in their rooms and that is why it is very necessary for me. Without a doubt, the colors improve a lot and if you want you can also use it with some light. The truth is that Mechul has entered the world of projectors well, making a product with the two factors that matter most to me in a projection, brightness and resolution. The rest, as I told you in my previous video, I'm not interested in because any TV stick can give you that and much better still. I repeat, this Mechul KP-1 is recommended, especially if you pay less than $300, because above that you may find other options. If I found something wrong with this projector, it is that its fan makes some noise, but that's something that can be hidden with the volume and another thing, is that it did not recognize some files through its USB input, and I had to convert some videos from MP4 to AVI format in order to view them. But I also know, that's the cost of optimizing resources, you won't get the perfect projector for $300 either. What do you think of the new Mechul KP-1? In my case, I like it because as I told you in my previous video, it has what I need in a projector, brightness and resolution. And not like other projectors that come with storage, RAM and operating systems, which I am not going to use, but I still have to pay for them. I think if you can get it at the discount, at $246 plus free shipping, then for that price and all its features, well worth it. And regarding the comparison with the Wombo T6 Max, in a couple of days I will upload that versus, because this video is already too long for me. If you got here, it is convincing proof that this video did not bore you, so give me a like and tell me what you thought of this Mechul KP-1, your comment is very valuable for people. Thank you for viewing my content and as always, help me and let's democratize technology. Until the next video.